The Apostle Paul, as he is writing these believers in Philippi, he's rejoicing, he's missing them, he is praying for them. And notice what he says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all, making my prayer with joy. Now here's why. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And then he says, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Praise God for that. Amen? The work that God has begun in all of us. If you're here today and you're a believer, the salvation, the gospel that you embraced, God is going to continue the work in you. And what is that ultimate work that God's doing in all of us? What is it? Come on, somebody yell it out. I know you know. Being conformed to the image of Christ. Romans talks about that before the foundation of the world, God determined that he was going to, what, conform us to the image of his son. And even though with the ups and the downs and the failures and not walking in a way worthy of the gospel, not walking in a manner worthy of the gospel, I don't know about you, but oftentimes that's my testimony for maybe a day or perhaps a whole week. To know that as a believer, to know that I'm secure in the gospel, and ultimately, what is God going to do? He is going to conform Ron Jones into the image of his son. So my faith does not rest in me. It rests in what God is doing through me. And the same is for you, too. Now, there's times where we got to confess our sins, right? Make it right. Come back. God, forgive me. That was not the way Christ would have done it. But we can take assurance in knowing that because of the gospel, he is conforming all of us to the image of his son. All right, let's start out singing Shout to the Lord, my Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none. to praise the wonders of your mighty love. Sing my comfort. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Sound of your name. 
Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful and where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place and though I walk through the wilderness blessed be your name and every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise and when the darkness closes in all still Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me and when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be and every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, oh, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Oh, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. Turn back to praise, and when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Can be seated. Well, good morning. You know, my kids say the funniest things, as you probably have had them do that in your home at times. My one of my kids yesterday said, 
I am rich. I found three cents. Perspective. Isn't that interesting? Perspective. Found three cents. I'm like, wow, did you grow up in the 1800s? Man, I don't know. Found three cents. You know, we are just as innocent in mind as our kids are, probably in God's eyes, how, how we do things on a fun level, on a good level, and also probably shakes his head as you do as I do with my children sometimes. It's interesting, I was with the senior saints in their Thursday night uh, or Thursday afternoon little luncheon that they do. And we were discussing back and forth uh, just some topics and issues. And uh, one point that really came up uh, at the end uh, that I kind of culminated with, and it's so true, in God's eyes, young, old, middle age, we're all God's children. We're all God's children. And likewise, he probably shakes his head, laughs, has a good time, and uh, at times has to correct. But in the end, we are, we are all God's children together. And that brings unity like no other when we truly put it in that perspective. The Bible says, For we are God's children created in Christ Jesus. So glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, we have the opportunity to come, and the praise team here has put together great music. How do we know it is great? Because it's about our God, our Father. We're about to hear the preaching of his word. How is that great? It's God's word. He speaks to us, his children. We are God's children. You may have come here today and have burdens that I can't imagine. You may come, like myself, full of, well, hope, but also joy, because I just finished a painting project in my house last night. I, you know, I'm excited just because something's done in the past. So a light heart here today. But you know, whether heavy heart, light heart, we're here coming to worship as God's children, coming here before our Creator, our Heavenly Father, and so let's go to him as brothers and sisters in Christ, and let's pray. Father, we are grateful that we get to come to Faith Baptist Church today, a church on a hill. We're grateful, Lord, that we get to be a light to this world, but now at this point, we get to gather back together. And this Sunday is a day that you've created, a day that you have set aside, Lord, in our lives to come into refocus and to get our hearts in tune with your word. Lord, we do pray as um, our pastor brings the message, may you truly work through him. May that message speak to each one of us, your children. And Lord, may the music, as we have the opportunity to sing, as we have the opportunity to express our hearts uh, towards you, Lord, some of our hearts are heavy hearts, but we know that you want us to come to you. Some of us are light today ready to go, ready to worship. And Lord, we are grateful that you all, that we all get to look at you as our Father. Lord, may you bless the remaining part of this service. Bless those that are working uh, downstairs with our children, teaching a message, Lord, to them from your word. But Lord, also we that are gathered here, may we in unity look and be ready to praise and be ready to sing and ready to glorify you together. We pray this in Christ's name. And all God's children say, Amen. All right. I will enter. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. We'll enter his courts with praise. Very good. We'll say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Here it gets weird. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Very nice. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Awesome. He 
has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Made me glad. Well, you are holy. You guys can be seated. If I could just ask you, and you can answer this in your head, but why are you, why are you here today? Why do you come to church? All right, is it, is it, is it because you just, you know, you feel like you, you have to go? I mean, every Sunday, every Wednesday you come out? Is it, you know, that's what you were taught? Is it, is it truly because you want to come, you want to adore, you want to exalt, you want to praise our Savior? All right, this next song we're singing is called In Christ Alone. And I think that title alone kind of, I mean, it wraps up what this song is about. You know, why are we here? We are here to exalt our Savior. We're here to, to, to praise and worship this man who, who this song is going to talk about. This is so, so theologically rich. I, I, when we sing this song, I just, I just want you to, to think about this, the text that we're singing, the words that we're singing, that we're worshiping our Savior with. It talks about him coming. All right, over 2,000 years ago, he came. He was born. He was a man. And yet he was, he was God. It's the beauty of the incarnation. He was God and man. And he came to this earth and he lived a life just like you and I. He walked around on this earth. He lived a life. The Bible says he was tempted just like we were. And yet, without sin, he was perfect. This song, this, this song is bringing all this together. And, it, and then he went to the cross for us, where we should be on that cross that we should be on that we should be dying on, paying the penalty for sin that puts a barrier between us and God. He took that for us. Christ did. He went on the cross for us. 
because that's why we're here. And three days after that, <laughs> the song says, he burst forth in glorious day, bursting forth from the grave, he rose again. That's why we're here, all right? That's why we come here to church, to worship him, to praise him for what he did. Not because we have to be here, not because we necessarily even want to be here, because we just like we're gonna be with our friends, we want to go have food, whatever. We're here because we're worshiping our Savior who came, lived that life for us, it was perfect, died for us, rose again, giving us hope of one day seeing him again. That's why we're here. So let's think about that. As we sing this song, let's just think through this text. Let's affirm, let's attest who our Savior is, who our Creator is, who we are worshiping today. All right. Yeah. 